Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. I have a pedal in my collection which was first introduced in 1974 and represents a technological leap that changed the trajectory of guitar effects. It was, debatably, the first pedal to utilise an op-amp distortion design. This pedal took guitar from the era of fuzz boxes and slashed speakers into the brave new world of controllable distortion and laid down the blueprint for every distortion pedal you've ever used. This is the MXR Distortion Plus. Now sadly I don't have one of the vintage ones, but the modern production units are still built on the same simple circuit, a non-inverting amplifier with hard clipping. There are only about 20 components in the whole thing, and at its heart beats the LM741, one of the earliest monolithic op-amps to be stable enough that it could be used reliably in electronic circuits. The 741 is to op amps what the Distortion Plus is to guitar pedals, the first of its kind with enough credibility that it changed the landscape of its field. Op amps have been around since the 1940s, but at that point they were made from multiple vacuum tubes, hardly pedal compatible. The advent of transistor technology gave us discrete silicon based op amps in the early 60s, but these were still bulky circuit board based designs. It would be another few years before monolithic integrated circuits were possible. The 741 itself was first introduced in 1968, and the breakthrough of being able to miniaturise a multi-transistor circuit into a single, robust, reliable chip suddenly made a whole new world of electronics possible. Inside the 741 we can see the differential amplifier, which compares the voltage between two inputs, allowing us to perform mathematical operations on signals. This is followed by a very familiar arrangement of a Class A gain stage into a Class AB output stage, just like the kind of circuits that we see on a much larger scale utilising valves in our guitar amplifiers. Being able to compare two different input voltages allows us to create a variable gain non-inverting amplifier from this op-amp. Here is the op-amp stage in the Distortion Plus. Our guitar is connected to the 741's non-inverting input and will be amplified through the device. However, we also have a negative feedback network connecting the 741's output to its inverting input, allowing the distortion control nestled inside to vary the gain of the whole op amp. What's happening here is actually very simple. The differential amplifier in the 741 is comparing the two inputs and then amplifying the difference between them. The gain through the op amp is determined by the resistor values on either side of this voltage divider. If the values are close to matching, then the gain is close to 1. With these values here, we get a signal gain of just below 2, equating to a 6 decibel increase. If there is much less resistance on the potentiometer side, then the gain will be much higher, over 200 times the initial signal amplitude with these values, equating to a 46 decibel boost. So the op amp allowed MXR to develop a tiny controllable amplifier in the mid 70s, but the op amp alone isn't a distortion pedal. This would just be a clean level boost were it not for the germanium clipping diodes. Germanium diodes are a semiconductor device which will only allow electricity to pass through them if it's above a certain voltage threshold. By connecting a couple of diodes between signal path and ground, they act as an amplitude limit for the signal as it travels to output. Anything above 0.3 volts gets sliced off and sent to ground, leaving a distorted signal to reach the output. Combining these with the gain control, we can select how severely the signal gets clipped, from a little bit of sparkle at low gain to almost full fuzz square wave at high gain.
this is a really elegant and controllable way to achieve distortion, especially compared to the fuzz pedals of the 1960s, which were nothing more than several discrete amplifying elements cascading into each other, adding gain onto gain until the signal tore itself apart. However, with an op amp, one could carefully design a variable gain amplifier. RC filter it to taste and then have it hard clipped by any selection of diodes one desired to achieve that then elusive amplifier distortion sound. The MXR Distortion Plus can be considered the first pedal that was seriously trying to sound like amplifier distortion, and it achieves it by building a circuit out of a tiny amplifier and clipping it in a way that mimics what happens when a valve amp gets turned up super loud. MXR may have been the first to implement this design and most importantly gain enough commercial success that we're still talking about their pedal to this day, but they didn't stay the only one for very long. By 1978 we had the Proco Rat and the Boss DS1 and probably countless others all building on that non-inverting op amp arrangement. Even very complex modern distortion circuits, once you strip away the active EQ controls and all the quality of life innovations, you'll find at their very core a circuit that looks remarkably similar to MXR's Distortion Plus. Ah, you join me in this sponsored section doing the same thing you are, watching videos to learn new things. You come to the Science of Loud to learn a thing or three about pedal circuits and guitar modification, and I go to Skillshare to learn how to do all the animations and graphics that help you to understand what I'm talking about. In this video, I've been showing you the inner workings of op amps, but the animations and graphics aren't quite as flashy as I'd like them to be. Well, with the help of Jake Barclett's class on motion graphic templates, I'm hoping to create some expression-driven animations and After Effects that will save me time going forward and make future videos look even better. Skillshare has classes on other topics like photography, cooking, art, graphic design and others which will help you improve your hobbies and perhaps even your career skills. As we are fast approaching Black Friday, Skillshare has a super deal going on. Now this isn't like other Black Friday sales which encourage you to consume more product, accumulate more stuff and accrue more clutter. No, this is about you. This is about your passions, your curiosities, your creative spirit and hopefully your growth. For a limited time only, you can take advantage of Skillshare's best deal of the year by using my link to get 50% off your Skillshare subscription. Now is the perfect time to invest in yourself. Use my link in the description to find out what you can learn on Skillshare. The Distortion Plus was undeniably innovative in its implementation of then new technology to achieve its distortion effect, but that doesn't explain why it sounds good. Making it louder and clipping the signal is only one part of the story. Tailoring that sound into something sonically relevant is done both intentionally and perhaps unintentionally by the components used here. Let's go back to the 741 for a moment, as there's something advantageous going on here which results from the limitations of early op amp design. These early op amps weren't yet fully optimised for audio applications. They were slow to change their voltage from one value to another, resulting in them being unable to amplify effectively once frequencies got too high. With a slew rate of 0.5 volts per microsecond, amplifying anything beyond 8.8 kHz simply isn't possible. Now that's terrible news for hi-fi applications, but no bad thing when it comes to guitar. Guitars aren't playing anything in that range anyway. Anything above that is high harmonic noise which just turns into fizz when distorted. So getting those frequencies out of the signal before clipping really helps avoid that jar of wasps sound that many distortion pedals are victim of. Clipping the signal will add a lot of high order harmonic content after the op amp which also needs to be controlled. This capacitor in the clipping stage forms a low pass filter with the resistor prior to attenuate everything over 16 kHz, further taming the fizz factor. And filtering inside the feedback network provides low end attenuation prior to the op amp, affording cleaner amplification of mid range frequencies. Due to the gain control being part of this filter, the cutoff frequency for attenuation changes with the amount of distortion being applied. The low end gets attenuated more as the amount of distortion increases, keeping the low drive setting sounding fat and full while giving a more focused range to the heavily distorted sounds. All of this adds together to create an upper mid hump, allowing the guitar to cut through a mix, a lot of distortion with a touch of fuzz from the germanium diodes, nothing boomy in the lows, and no shrill high-end fizz. This is a distortion that will pair perfectly with the slightly mid-scoop tone stack of Fender-style clean amps, like my Tone King Imperial.
For one of the oldest and simplest op-amp distortion circuits, the sound generated from the Distortion Plus still holds up. But that's not to say nothing has improved since the 1970s. Op-amps today have a much lower noise floor and can swing their voltage far faster, making them much more appropriate for full range audio applications. Pedal design has also grown to include better buffers, better signal to noise ratios, more extensive EQ shaping capabilities, and volume controls that don't need to be set to 10 to achieve unity gain. But it's hard to argue the simplicity of the Distortion Plus as anything other than a huge benefit. Just plug it in, turn up the distortion, and you've got a great sounding 70s rock tone with no effort whatsoever. You'll find affiliate links in the description if you plan on grabbing one of these for yourself. And don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now. Keep it loud and stay safe. Smells vintage.